morning. I am so glad I get to be here with you today. But the truth is, I miss getting to see all of your faces. But something I know is that whenever God calls me to do something, I'm gonna be able to do it, but not because of me or my own power, but because I have God and His power with me. And I have a little trick that helps me remember that even when things get hard, I have God's power to help me. So, on its own, this ping pong ball can't stay in the air. Nope. But, with the power of this blow dryer, watch what happens. It's in the air! But it's not all on its own, it has the power of the blow dryer to help us. Now, that blow dryer is really powerful and it works magic on my hair every morning, but God is way more powerful than that. In fact, He's more powerful than anything on this earth because He created all of it. He created everything in the universe and rules over everything in the universe. And that mighty God has given us a gift. He's given us a friend called the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit helps us do things with God. So that's what we're gonna hear about today. But first, let's praise Him. Rejoice, for death has lost its power. Rejoice, for the victory is ours. Oh, sing you heavenly choir. Come on, church, lift your voices higher. Look what our God has done. Today's true story from the Bible happened not long after Jesus died on the cross for all our sins and rose again. We call that the resurrection, and it's what Jesus did to rescue us and bring us back to God forever. Now, after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to his friends, the disciples. He talked to them and he spent time with them, and he did this for more than a month. Jesus wanted to prepare the disciples for the time when they wouldn't be able to see him in person anymore. He wanted them to be ready for when he would return to heaven to be with his father, God. Jesus knew that life was going to get really hard for the disciples, and he knew they wouldn't be able to do the things they needed on their own. But Jesus didn't want them to give up. He wanted them to know that with God's power, they could be strong and they could be more like Him, and they would never, ever be alone. Now at the end of those 40 days, Jesus' time on earth was coming to an end, and that's when He told all His friends to meet Him at a place called Galilee. 
there was a mountain there. And on that mountain, Jesus gave the disciples a very important message. He told them that all the power in heaven and on earth had been given to him. He also told them that it was now their job to go and tell all the things they'd been taught, how much God loves his people to everyone. Did you hear that? Everyone all over the world. Now, before they had a chance to get too overwhelmed with how big of a job that would be, Jesus told them that they would have a helper. And he told them about something or someone who would come give them the power they needed to do all of the things that God was asking them to do. Jesus told the disciples about the Holy Spirit. They couldn't do any of the things God wanted them to do alone, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, they could. Now, did that mean the disciples could never talk to Jesus again? Of course not. Jesus looked at the disciples and told them, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And after saying all those things, something amazing happened. Jesus actually went up into the sky. The Bible tells us a cloud hid Jesus from the disciples' view, and then he was gone. The disciples were left alone. Wow, just think about it. Jesus had died on the cross, and then he had risen from the dead. And when he came back to life, the disciples thought they had their friend back, but then he was gone again. They must have been crushed. And all they knew to do was to go back to Jerusalem and wait, because that's what Jesus had told them to do. So that's what they did. They waited. And if you've ever waited for something to happen, and I know you have, then you can understand how the disciples felt. They didn't know what to expect, but they were full of anticipation. They just knew it was going to be something big because Jesus had promised. And just a few days later, when all the disciples were gathered together, it happened. Suddenly, there was a loud sound like the blowing of a violent wind. Something was coming. The Bible says that at that moment, little flames came to rest on top of each one of the disciples' heads. It looked like they were on fire. But these flames didn't hurt the disciples at all. That's because this was not normal fire. This was God's way of sending the Holy Spirit to live inside them and be their helper. And to show the disciples how the Holy Spirit would help them do things they couldn't do on their own, something else amazing happened. All of the disciples started to speak different languages. Now, what was so amazing about that? They weren't speaking languages they knew already. The only reason they knew they were speaking real languages is because other people were there who could understand them. Now, the disciples couldn't do this on their own. It was the Holy Spirit who gave them the ability to do this. And some people who were listening had their doubts. They were not so sure about what the believers were saying. And that's when Peter, one of Jesus' closest friends, gathered everyone together and reminded them all of the amazing things Jesus had done when he was on earth. He told everyone there how Jesus had died on a cross and had been buried for three days, but that God had raised him back to life. Jesus had conquered sin and death, and by believing in him, all people can have eternal life with God too. He told the people about God's unending and forever love. And because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, Peter helped lots of people understand who Jesus is and what he had done for them. And that very day, about 3,000 people came to believe in Jesus and were baptized. Now talk about a celebration. And that's what happened on the day we call Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was the gift that Jesus had promised would come to help the disciples do all the things they couldn't do on their own. The Holy Spirit would help them remember everything Jesus had taught them. The Holy Spirit would give them power to do miracles. And even though the disciples still really missed getting to see Jesus with their own eyes, the Holy Spirit reminded them that they were not alone. They would never be alone again. The power of the Holy Spirit would be inside them always. 
Now, after that morning, the disciples knew it was time to go and do what Jesus had asked them to do on the mountain in Galilee. They began traveling around and telling everyone the things that Jesus had taught them. They taught about God's love for them and how God wants us to love and serve others. They taught how Jesus died to take all of our sins away, even though he didn't deserve it. And they taught how by becoming a believer of Jesus, we can all be close to God forever. You see, God's plan was not finished at the resurrection. Yes, God had made a way for us to be with him forever. His son Jesus had died on the cross and then he rose from the dead three days later. By doing that, God took the punishment for our sin. It was God's plan to save us because he loves us. But God also sent the Holy Spirit. And don't miss this, guys. That gift wasn't just for the disciples, it's for us too. Now we don't ever have to worry about being alone or doing the thing God wants us to do on our own. When we accept Jesus as our savior and trust that he died on the cross for our mistakes, we get the gift of the Holy Spirit too. And that means that God's helper is always with us and we aren't ever alone. The Holy Spirit helps us to be more like Jesus. The Spirit helps us to show love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We can't do any of these things on our own, but with the Holy Spirit inside us, we can. We just heard from Miss Maddie that God sent the Holy Spirit to be our helper after Jesus left the earth. And I gotta be honest, it's a little confusing for me. I mean, there's God, the amazing heavenly Father who created everything. And then there's Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. And then there's the Holy Spirit, which is our helper who lives inside of us. And it's like, they're all three different people, but they all seem kind of the same. I mean, Jesus talks to God, his Father, just like we do. But then Jesus also says, I am in the Father and he is in me. And now we're just hearing that the Holy Spirit came to help us to take Jesus's place. I'm not sure how this all works. I think I'm gonna eat a snack while I sit here and ponder on that for a moment. Luckily, I have my favorite candy with me. Twixes are my favorite. Hold on a minute. Hold on just one minute. I think I have a way that I can explain this. I've got a Twix right here. And this Twix is made up of three parts. We've got the yummy chocolatey part, we've got the gooey caramel, and we've got that cookie that gives it that awesome crunch. It's definitely made up of three parts. But if I were to tell you that my favorite candy bar is a Twix, you would understand that my favorite candy bar was this one thing. Even though it's made up of chocolate, yep, caramel, yep, and a cookie. It's three different parts, but all together, there's still one candy bar. Now, God is obviously not like a candy bar. He's God. But in a way, this helps me to understand how God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are all three different things, but also make up one thing. Now let's head back to Miss Maddie. I think she's got a really fun game to play with some of her friends to show us how we can trust God and the Holy Spirit. I do have a really fun game for us to play. It's called Trust Maze. And here's what you're gonna need. You guys are gonna build a maze in your house. And this can be done with whatever you have, chairs, blankets, toys, and make it as long as you want. And then you're gonna take one person to guide them through the maze, but they can't see. So you can either take a blindfold or just have them close their eyes. And then you're gonna have one other person guide them through the maze to help them walk through it. But you can only help them with their words. Okay, let's do it. to the voice of the person guiding you through the maze, we can listen to the Holy Spirit to help guide us through our lives. 
God sent us a helper so that we never have to be alone. He is always with us to teach us and guide us. Now let's pray and thank God for sending the Holy Spirit. Dear God, thank you for who you are. And we thank you so much for sending the Holy Spirit so that we are never alone. We love you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am so glad that you guys were able to join us today. It was so cool to hear the story of when God sent the Holy Spirit and even cooler to know that we all get that gift too. Now let's fix our eyes on God as we worship him together. Song. I love the reminder that no matter what is happening here on earth, we need to fix our eyes to Jesus. And I'm so grateful that when Jesus went to heaven, he sent us the helper, our friend, the Holy Spirit. And that's what our memory verse tells us. In John 14, 26, it says, But the Father will send the friend in my name to help you. The friend is the Holy Spirit, and he will teach you all things. He will remind you of everything I have said to you. I am so grateful for the Holy Spirit and the fact that I don't have to do this all by myself. I have God with me in the form of the Holy Spirit. And so now let's talk to God. Dear God, you are mighty and you are powerful. And we are so grateful that you don't leave us on our own, that we can do all things with you and with our friend, the Holy Spirit. God, be with us this week and help us to see you and to hear from you no matter what is happening, no matter where we are. And it's in your name that we pray, amen. I'm so glad you guys were here today and that we got to hear the story of our friend, the Holy Spirit. I can't wait to see you next week. Bye.